time Tuesday, she comes around so quick. Um, so what we're doing is uh, making a few films today. We've got real bad weather here, you know, pouring down the rain and it's a bit of cold. We've got finished what we got to do, so we nipped in and Reese instructed me that I've got to do some old time Tuesday films. So these are things that won't mean much to people. Some are perhaps very interesting. This won't be so interesting, but it was lovely. So when I worked at Big Stables as a kid, as an ankle bite, you know, young young man then, yeah. Um, there was men there that they honestly didn't know how much knowledge they had, you know. They didn't know, you know. It's like it's like someone I don't know laying bricks or a stone mason. Or, they could look at a piece of stone and think, yeah, that will make. I can carve that in that way. I can work on that piece of stone and it will do. And look at another piece of stone and say, no, that's no good because they could see what we couldn't see. So they see the grain running the stone, etc., or what it looked like when it was done. It wouldn't look right. So them type of things and that sort of knowledge was done by hands-on work. And that's I'm always on about that. I know you know you see an old harness maker working was like incredible what they could do and the quality of work they could turn out. And when, when money wasn't a limit, when money wasn't, you know, there was like someone didn't care, but they wanted to set a gig on this and they wanted it made like this, you could see that workmanship, you know, f fly through the roof, you know, unbelievable. But this is just a little thing, nothing to do with workmanship or anything like that really, it's just something we had. And, and when the stable, um, they got a, a a speaker electric thing you know you press the button and talk so when we was cutting chaff we'd be sending up to the top of the the, the uh the stable you know sometimes you see a stable oh, older stables now with a tower on them you know well that was where you cut your chaff because you would chop it up there and it would f fall into a big hopper and the hoppers were made um or at least the ones i saw were made out of pieces of timber slotted in to one another much like building a log cabin and you'd come up through the floors like that to the top but we had a five bladed chaff cutter up there and was five blades you see a lot of three blade one but this was five blades a big machine and it would be driven off um, a lister engine so you start the engine up and everything would have to come upstairs so they had uh, a thing that I mean, I wish, I wish I could have recorded it and um, and it would be lovely. So you had a, a, a pull downstairs, you know, this chain that come down with like a, like a lavatory chain used to be years ago. Um, I'll just show you anyway, this is it. So it had this handle on it, you know, and you'd pull it, yeah, and it would just ring the bell. So upstairs, so... But these lads have developed more or less a language so and i can't remember any of it but you know that would be time for a cup of tea you know something else would be pull it up another one would be you know let it down and this would bell would be going off up there and they didn't have to speak they didn't have to shout down anything at all and there was a whole language done off of that and they was you know they we're going to throw it out and i thought well that's so lovely isn't it to have you know something like that um and uh yeah so you could you know you'd have it tighten that up a bit and that's what it would be so all the way up the top this chain come down to be this lovely little turned handle look beautiful thing isn't it old as the hills this is i put it on a new piece of board actually i put it on a new piece of board because um, the other one was just falling apart, you know, um, that they had it on. So yeah, that was it. So, and when you was, after you'd been there and you'd cut a lot of chaff, and we used to cut um, different chaff for different horses. I know that sounds silly now, but we would have what we'd call clover. High, very tall clover would grow this big, and that would come in in bells. And what we'd do with it, we'd done two things with it. One, we'd go up to the brewery where they was making the beer, and there was always a steam valve there you could take off, you know, and we put the steam over it, 
and we'd make what they call tea, clover tea for horses. So we'd, we'd soak it in red hot, I mean very, very hot water steam basically, into a big vat you know, on wheels that we could push around, wouldn't it? it was and lead lined, made a bloody ton. Of anyway, we'd go up there and and do that, put it on there, two bells of that, wouldn't open it, wouldn't cut the bells open, just put the steam on it like that. It would go through and it would make this dark brown tea, yeah? The other thing we used the, the clover for, that would go upstairs and be chopped for maybe show horses, different horses. And we always had, always had good quality seriously good quality straw you, they wouldn't buy any any it had to be good quality so what i mean by that is oat straw has got a shine to it slightly tint of gold in it if you like you know a bright straw well, that's what we would have oat straw so the oat straw would come in and that would always be you know had to be looked after properly so we had a big store for it obviously and then we'd take up 50 bells 60 100 bells would go upstairs on the floor for cutting him because obviously if he was cutting it you had to cut it downstairs and take it up and put it in or cut it upstairs and let it fall in well that was the easiest way of doing it, it was just let it fall and the lads would mix it lovely now if you wanted some show mix um they clink that and that would be clover straw or one of a you know and they would go in bags them ones so that had come down from the top to a different chute you know, maybe the floor below or the floor below that or down in the stable itself. And it would come down and that would go over that side to, to feed certain horses. You know, you know, because the food value of it would be different, put a shine on their coat, whatever they wanted it for. And, and the other thing, we'd have meadow hay and coarse hay. So this bell would ring and the lads upstairs would know exactly what was what. And then they'd turn the chute round so it didn't go in the main hopper, would go down into another one. A bit like... A mill, you know, you've seen a windmill and like water mills working. Well, it all has to go upstairs to be milled and then come down, doesn't it? Well, that's what they'd do. And then they'd put them bags over there. And but the whole language was done off of this bell and it just used to fat. Because if you didn't know when you first got there as a youngster, you'd think, what, well, you know, and if you was upstairs, well, you couldn't get it wrong. You'd be in serious trouble. So they'd have a fella up there new, and he'd go clover. And that, and that one that we make up might be there was big bags of chaff I mean they'd be I don't know the sacks would be four foot wide yeah, easily four foot wide by about five six foot tall and then they fill them up tie the tops up and they'd go to that part of the stable and even we used to chop for other people you know maybe there might still be when I was a a, a nipper there would be like people with Bread rounds, you know, and uh, milk, Coleman, um, like we used to take veg round, or anything like that. There was still some you know, delivery horses still working. So we might chop for them, you know, they'd come in and collect. And I loved that when they used to come in, because we never saw lightweight horses, or what we called lightweight, like cobs. We wouldn't see them. But you'd see a trolley come in, and he'd pick up 10, maybe 12 bags on the back of a trolley, and off they'd go with the old pony, take it home, you know. And the Coleman's horse, he had like a, a big vanner, two big vanners he had, and like two coal, coal carts. Um, so they'd come in and pick up some stuff as well. I don't know whether that was official or unofficial, they always come Saturday mornings, but um, yeah, that's what it was. So from this, all of them different types of chaff, when it was time for a cup of tea, when it was whatever, they could talk through this bell. And I just thought it was fascinating, so that's why I saved it. Um, I'll never ever use it, there's no need anymore, but it's just a lovely keepsake, yeah. So, yeah, that's it.